Jeremiah chapter number 32. Would you turn there with me? Jeremiah 32. And I'm just going to read two verses. I'm really going to develop just one. But Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 26 and 27. And one of my favorite portions of scripture. Genesis 22, uh, Jeremiah 32, 26, 27. Follow along with me. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? That's it so far, the scripture. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? For a few moments this morning, I want to speak to you from the subject, a reminder of who God is. A reminder of who God is. Bow your heads with me. Father, bless this word and charge it with your power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When you've walked with God as long as I have, I've been saved uh, for over 50 years. I was saved at the age of seven, and I've been walking with the Lord uh, all of these years. When you've walked with God, you, you, you begin to know God. You begin to see how he moves and how he works. And all of us that have been saved any length of time, you, you can look over your life and see that there are some things that God has done and done repeatedly. One of the things that God does, not just to me and not just to us, but if you read Holy Scripture, you will see he does it over and over again. God has a habit of finding you in your mess or finding you at the worst times of your life, finding you when everything is going crazy and nothing is going right. He has a way of coming into those times and telling you, but you're going to be great. He has a way of telling you, it's going to be all right. Have you ever had God do that to you where all Hell is breaking loose in your life. Nothing is working. The bills aren't paid. The, the cupboards are empty. The refrigerator has nothing in it. You, you have, you're searching through, through the cushions of your living room sofa to try to find change. To, to, and and with, with all the craziness going on, God will come to you in, in, in some form, whether it's a sermon or a song or a prophetic word. He will come to you and he will say, I got you. You're going to be fine. It's going to be all right. God has a way of, of telling you when you have no money in your bank account, don't worry. You're going, to be, you, you, you're going to be rich. I'm going to make sure you have all that you need. You will never need for anything. And you want to say, but God, don't you see that I have no money? He will tell you when the doctor tells you your body is sick. He will tell you, that's all right. I'm a healer. I'll heal you. You're going to be okay. Your child is in trouble and acting the fool and won't get it together. And God will say, that's all right. They're my ch that's my child. I'll take care of him. He's going to be all right. Do I have anybody who's watching who can say, Bishop, I, I know I, I've had that conversation with God. I've had that conversation where, where I feel at, at my lowest end. I don't feel like I can do anything or I'll ever be successful. And God has come along and said, hey, 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 don't mind what you see. Listen to what I'm saying. Don't believe what you see, but believe what I say. Oh, somebody say amen. That's the context of our text. Uh, Jeremiah the prophet, and I don't have time to deal with it the way I want to, but Jeremiah the prophet has prophesied to Zedekiah that the nation of, 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 of Israel is going to be captured by Nebuchadnezzar. He says, uh, the nation has done enough and God is finally going to judge you. Babylon is coming. As a matter of fact, Babylon has besieged them to this point. And, and uh, Jeremiah says, uh, don't believe those false prophets that are telling you God's going to bring you out of this. You are going to have to deal with, with the repercussions of your actions. And, and so the time of the text is a time where everybody in the city, everybody in the nation is afraid and concerned. Everybody in the nation is wondering what's going to happen. And, and so it is in the midst of this that God speaks this text to Jeremiah. I, I'm going to not deal with the first uh, 25 verses of this chapter, which deal with the fact when Jeremiah bought 
bought the land from his, from his relative and bought that land and, and bought the deed and put the deed in the ground because that deed, what he did not understand is that when the people left and people would say the land no longer belongs to Israel, there was a deed that the land was bought. But I'm going to leave that alone because that leads us into a whole other, a whole other avenue. Uh, but I want to speak to you from this 26th and 27th verse where, where God comes to Jeremiah in the midst of a ridiculous situation, in the midst of seeming defeat, in the midst of knowing that, that, that you, you are in the middle of a struggle that you can't get out of, God comes to Jeremiah, and as he comes to you this morning, and he says, I want you to be, to be reminded of this simple thing. I want to remind you who I am. All hell is breaking loose in your life, but I want to remind you of who I am. You, you, the, we, we are still suffering the effects of racism, but I want to remind you of who I am. We're still in the midst of the pandemic, and people are still sick and dying, but I want to remind you of who I am. Your money might be funny. You might have been laid off, or you might have been furloughed, but in the midst of all of that, I want to remind you of who I am. Because what God wants you to understand this morning is that, is that it is not enough just to, be, to, 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 to see what is natural. You have to be able to see beyond the natural and to see the God who is supernatural. Somebody say amen. And so he begins. He says, he says he, the word of the Lord comes to me in the midst of my craziness, in the midst of all that's going on and the Lord says something very simple. He says, behold, look, almost like, okay, you've been focused on the problem. You've been focused on the army. You've been focused on the sickness. You've been focused on the racism. You've been focused on all of this other stuff. And it's not that I'm denying that any of that stuff is there, but for a moment, I want you to take your eyes off of that and look at me. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And so he says, he says, listen, I know what's around you. I know what you see, but I need you to behold. That's what the word there means. Look, look, look. I want you to understand that in spite of what you see, there is more to be seen than just what you see. God, that's good. I'm going to say that again. There's more to be seen than just what you see. So he says, look, Jeremiah, look, behold, behold. First thing he says, I am the Lord. So I'm going to give you three points. The first point, the first point, as I'm reminding you of who God is, the first point, he is Lord. Somebody say Lord. Yeah. He says, behold, Jeremiah, take a look at this. I am the Lord. In, in the midst of all that's going on, with all the negative things that are happening, I want to remind you, Jeremiah, that I am am the Lord. Now this is going to be good because when you see the word there, Lord, if you have a King James Version, you will see it's in all capital letters. L-O-R-D is in all caps. When you see that in the King James Version, it is a direct translation of the name of God, which is Jehovah or Yahweh. This is the name that God uses when God wants to reveal himself. He is Jehovah. And so whatever you see in, in the King James, the capital L-O-R-D, it is Jehovah. Jehovah is God's covenant name. It is, it is the name from which all other things come. He is Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Nisi. He's Jehovah Sitkanu. He's Jehovah Rofa. He's Jehovah Rohi. He, he, he. Jehovah means, listen to me, the covenant keeping God. He, whenever you see Jehovah, God is, is, is reminding you that I am the God of covenant. My God, my God. I am the God of covenant. And why is that important? Because covenant connects. Covenant connects two parties or three parties. Covenant is a thing that connects. And God is saying, whenever you see him say, I am the Lord, he says, I am the God that, listen, makes covenants and keeps covenants. Why is that important? Because sometimes we have been with people and you have a covenant, but they might make it, but they don't keep it. So he, he wants to remind us in the midst of the calamity, in the midst of the craziness that's going on, I am 
the Lord. Leave that alone, Douglas. Do not deal with the I am, because if you start talking about the I am, you're never going to get to these other points. Leave the I am out. You'll come back to that at some other time. Behold, I am the Lord. I am the God that makes covenants. I am the God that keeps covenant. Now, I want you to understand, covenant is critical. God is a God of covenant. And, and that's good news to you and I because it means that he is always going to keep his part of the bargain. Now, there are different kinds of covenant. There, 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 there are covenants that, that, that are conditional and covenants that are unconditional. A conditional covenant says, if you do this, I will do this. If the party of the first part does this, then the party of the second part will do that. And if you don't do what you're supposed to do, then I don't have to do what I said to do. Are you with me? That's a, co a, a conditional covenant. But an unconditional covenant says, no matter what you do, I'm going to do this for you. No matter how things work, I'm going to do this for you. And I, I'm so glad that our relationship with God, while we do have conditional covenants, the basis of our relationship is that God has a covenant with us. My God, I feel like shouting already. Because when you understand his covenant with you, it means that you have an assurity that no matter what comes and no matter who goes, that God has a covenant with you. He is a covenant-making and a covenant-keeping God. Somebody say covenant! Hold up, hold up. I must explain to you that, that there's a difference between a covenant and a contract. While they are similar, they are not the same. What do you mean, Douglas? Well, a contract is a relationship that is based on mistrust. Because I don't trust that you're going to do the work. Because I've gotten burned so many times. But since we're going to go into this endeavor together, we have a contract. It is based on the fact that if you don't do what you say you're going to do, then I can turn around and do this. Because the contract means that, that well, I'm not sure that you're going to be faithful. I'm not sure that you're going to do it. So therefore, we go into contract. But that, while it is similar, is different than a covenant. A covenant is not based on mistrust. A covenant is based on trust. Preach it, Douglas. In other words, you go into covenant not because I don't think you're going to do it. I go into covenant because I expect you to do it. That's why marriage is a covenant, not a contract. And so, so, so whenever you see covenant, it means that this is something that God is, is looking forward to doing and he is going to do his part. I want you to understand that we are in covenant with God. He is the Lord. He says, look, check this out, Jeremiah. I know everything is crazy. I know life is going crazy. I know your leaders are going crazy. But in spite of all that's going crazy, I want you to hold on to this. I am the covenant keeping God. I am the God who makes and keeps covenant. Covenant in the face of conflict. Covenant in the face of crisis. No matter what's going on in your life, Jeremiah, I came to remind you, and I've come to remind you as you're watching in your living room or in your kitchen or even in your bedroom, I came to remind you that we serve a God who is a covenant keeper. Jehovah is his name. And because he keeps covenant in the midst of all the craziness through which we are living right now, in the midst of all of the foolishness that we have to deal with on a daily basis, I want to remind you, behold, take a look at this. I am the Lord. And because I am the Lord, you can hold on. Because I am the Lord, you'll be able to make it out of this. Why? Because we are in covenant. Somebody say amen. Behold, I am the Lord. I am the Lord. He said, I'm the Lord. So the first thing I want to remind you of who God is, God is the Lord, the Jehovah, the Jehovah, the Yahweh, the, 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 the God who makes and keeps covenant. He's the, the, the fully existent God who is self-contained. He is Jehovah all by himself. And that will be enough of a reason to shout. But God has a way of like to overdo it. He says, not only am I the Lord, I am also God. Behold, I am the Lord, the God, the God, the God, the God. Now, now most of us would pass over that, but please understand, it's a different word when he says God as opposed to Lord. The word there, God, is the word Elohim. 
It is the word we are introduced to God in, in Genesis chapter 1 because Elohim is, is the creative name of God. Oh, Lord, help me preach this. See, Elohim means that God is the God that can create. I'm so glad that God is a creative God. When when you look at the heavens and the stars and you look at the seas and the oceans and you look at birds and the animals, you realize God is a creative God. I know they tell you that that stuff just happened out of nowhere. I know those who who, who, who proffer the, the theory of evolution, they say it just happened together. It just kind of all came together. Impossible, impossible that all of the the, the micro adjustments and the the, the, the things that are going on inside of the body of of, of the animals or even inside of your own body is impossible that it just kind of happened. Somebody had to put it together. Somebody whose intelligence is way higher than ours had to put it together and his name is Elohim. Somebody say Elohim. Yes. Elohim is the creative name of God. It is where God shows himself as creator. Now I must tell you this, God is so much God. He is able to create in many different ways. He is a God of infinite variety. All you have to do is look in the animal kingdom at all of the different species of birds and you'll see that he's a God of infinite variety. If you look in under the ocean and all of the different species of fishes, you see he's a God of infinite variety. Just look at mankind, at humankind, and you see all the different shades and noses and lips and eyes and body shapes. You realize he is a God God of infinite variety. He is Elohim, the creator. Now, here's what I love about God. He says to Jeremiah and he says to us, in the midst of all of the craziness that's going on, I want you to remember this. First of all, I am Jehovah. I'm going to keep the covenant I made with you. But then he says, I want to remind you that I am your God. I am, I am your creative God. Why is that important? It means no matter what you're going through, whatever it is you're going to need, whether you need it now or whether you need it later, I'm God enough, I'm creative enough to be able to create a way out for you. Oh, is there anybody who's listening has ever had God make a way out of no way? Have you ever had God do something that when you did it, when he did it, you were like, how'd that happen? How'd that happen? Have you ever needed him to come through for you? And he comes through for you in ways you cannot even imagine. Have you ever had God create a way out for you? See, that's, that's the Elohim right there. That's, that's God who says no matter what it looks like, when I'm ready to bring you out, I, I will do whatever is necessary. What do you mean? You, you, you need the way out and you can't make it out. You need the way out and you can't see your way out. But I'm God enough. And no matter what goes on, I am the God that has the power of creativity. And I can create a way out for you, my Lord. If you were in here, I'd have you slap your neighbor. Well, well, before the quarantine. I'd have you slap your neighbor and say he's making a way out for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now, listen, leaning, leaning. when When it comes to his creativity, God, God is creative in his creativity. What do you mean? See, there are two types of creation. The first type of creation, and you have to understand this, when God created the world, he created the world out of nothing. There was nothing. So God is able to create something out of nothing. Oh, that's good news. It it means if you ain't got nothing in, in your cupboard, he can create something out of it. If you ain't got nothing in your wallet, he can create something out of it. If you ain't got nothing, nothing don't stop God from being creative. I said nothing does not stop God from being creative. God is so much God, he can take nothing. And from nothing, he can make something. He has demonstrated that already. So he is able to come into your situation where somebody says, hey, you ain't nothing. That's all right. I might not be nothing, but I serve a God who is able to take nothing and make nothing some eye. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but are you hearing me? God says no matter what they say about you and no matter what you might even think about you, I want you to know I can take nothing and make something. And I'm God enough to not only do that. Here's the second part of creation. I can take something and make something else. Here's the proof. In in Genesis, when God creates The Bible says out of nothing, he spoke, and from nothing, everything was created. 
But then God decided, I want to show that I can not only create out of nothing, I can take the something that was created out of nothing and make something else. So he, he has created dirt. The dirt was created a part of the earth. But God, when he decided to make mankind, he reached down into the dirt. And from the dirt, he formed man and breathed into man. Are, are, are you all hearing me? Yeah, yeah. He, he breathed into man and man became a living soul. In other words, he took the dirt which he made from nothing and made something else. Oh, that's the God we serve. He don't only stop there. He says, now that I've done it that way, I can still make. I'm going to let the dirt that I made out of nothing from which I made man and woman. No, no, from which I made man. Now I'm going to make woman. He takes the man that he made out of the dirt that he made out of nothing. And from the man, he forms woman. And then he says, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. Now I'm going I'm to design it so, so that the, the woman who I took out of the man, who I took out of the dirt that I made from nothing, I'm going to allow the two of them to get together. And now when rec uh, re recreation has to be done or when, when, when something has to come out, it's not going to come from me. Now it's going to come from them. Oh, my Lord. In other words, the God we serve is a God of infinite variety. And the God that we serve is able to do so. What he's saying to Jeremiah and what he's saying to you is that no matter how things look today, don't give up hope because I am still God. No matter how things look, no matter what they say in Washington, that's all right, I'm still God. No matter what comes out the White House, that's all right, I am still God. No matter what comes out of Oklahoma, Homer, I am still God. No matter what comes out or wherever it comes out of, I am still God. Behold, I am the Lord. Yeah, I'm Jehovah, the covenant keeping God. But I'm also God, the God, the God that is able to be creative in the face of your challenges. I'm able to be creative in the face of your consequences and your complications. No matter what you are going through, I am the Lord, your God, Jehovah, your Elohim, my God. God, I feel like shouting. I am the Lord. And because I am the Lord and your God, it doesn't matter what's going on. I am sovereign over it all. I'm king over it all. I'm bad over it all. And it does not matter what's going on or who is in charge or how things look. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Oh, Lord, let me deal with that. First point. He is Lord. Second point, he is God. Third point, he is almighty. Ooh, look at it. He says, I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything? Ooh. Now, 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 now. When we're talking about the fact that is there anything, what I love about this text, it's this unusual, is that very rarely in scripture do you find God flexing. <laughs> Very rarely in scripture do you find God uh, 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 showing that he is awesome and all, all powerful. Very, very rarely. He doesn't have to do it because when you really have power, you don't have to show you have power. But, but every now and again, it's good to just remind people who you is. And so, so you don't find him seeing it doing it often, but you, one of the few times you find him seeing it, doing it, is with, with Job. When, when Job was questioning him, he, he stopped and said, hold on, hold on, hold on, Job. Where were you when I formed the earth? Where were you when I told the, 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 the waters to come to the shore and come up to this point and go no further? Where were you when I designed this earth? He says, you're not qualified to question me. Where were you? Very rarely does he do it. Very rarely. Uh, he, he did it one of the time in Isaiah. In Isaiah, when he was sick and tired of the people, he said to them, he said, ask of me a sign. Ask me. He said, ask me for anything. I want to show you how bad I am. Ask of me a sign. And, and the king wouldn't ask the sign. He was afraid. And God said, since you won't ask me a sign, I'll tell you what. I'm going to show you how bad I am. I'm going to give you a sign. Here's the sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. God doesn't often do it, but when he does it, he, listen, if you're going to do it, if you're going to flex, flex. 
If, if, if you're going you to bring it up, back it up. Oh, I just said something right there. I said, if you're going to bring it up, back it up. So he says, he says, check it out. Behold, I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm Jehovah. That's covenant. The God of all flesh. I, I, I'm creative and I've got power over all flesh. Then he says, with all of that, here's the bottom line. I want you to know that I'm also the almighty. The, 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 the term in scripture for the almighty God is El Shaddai. Woo. El Shaddai is how God introduced himself when, when he wanted to show off. He said, I am El Shaddai. I am the God that, that, that has all power. I want to remind you in the midst of this pandemic, God still has all power. I want to remind you in the midst of the madness going on in our country, God has all power. I want to remind you in the midst of the craziness that we're living through, God has all power. He is the El Shaddai, or as the old saints used to say, El Shaddai. He is the God that has all power. I want to remind you of who God is. God, the God that we serve. God, the God that we worship is the God that has all power. He is El Shaddai. So he says to Jeremiah, listen, I am the Lord the God of all flesh. And what use is it to have all this power if I don't use it? Is there anything too hard for me to do? Hold up, back up, back up. What you got to understand when he says this, this word here, is there anything too hard for me to do? I, I did my research and, and the word there hard, it doesn't just mean difficult. It, 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 doesn't, it, it, it does mean difficult, but it doesn't just mean difficult. It, it doesn't just mean that is there anything too difficult for me? Or is there anything I can't do? Actually, it's a flip. If, if, if you were to study it in the Hebrew, it, it really means, he says, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. At what am I not marvelous? Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. He, it, it, it's not that it's just not too difficult. The, the, the real, the, real the, the, the root meaning of it, he says, I'm the God of all flesh. At what am I not marvelous? What am I not extraordinary at? What am I not wonderful at? What, what is it in your life that I can't do spectacularly? I came to tell you that we serve a God who is able to do exceeding and abundantly above what we can ask or think. I came to remind you of who your God is. Your God is the El Shaddai. He is the omnipotent God. All power. That means whatever you need and whenever you need it, he is able to perform. I'm almost done, but I want to tell you that as we look over our lives uh, and we look over what's going on in this nation uh, and the world, it is easy to be overwhelmed by the trouble. It is easy to be overwhelmed by the negativity. It is easy to, to, to put your head in the sand and say, I'm tired of all that's been going on. I'm tired of racism. I'm tired of COVID-19. I'm tired of that fool in the White House. I'm tired of all. I'm, I'm numb because I'm tired. Every week is this thing. Every week is something else. And if you're not careful, you focus all of your attention on that, but God told me to remind you, hey, take your eyes off of that and behold, I am the Lord. I am the God of all flesh and is there anything that's too hard for me? Wait up. Is there anything that you need done that I won't do marvelously? Is there anything that you need done that I'm not wonderful at? I don't know what you need God to do. I don't know what you believe in God for, but hear the word of the Lord. This is an announcement to you, a reminder to you of who God is. Your God is Jehovah Jireh. Your God is the Elohim. And your God is the El Shaddai. And because he's El Shaddai, he is able. I said he's able. He's the Lord God Almighty. Don't, don't pay attention to what's going on now. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. This crisis uh, will be a memory. Uh, this president uh, will be a memory. Uh, this pandemic uh, will be a memory. Uh, but the Lord, uh, I said the Lord, uh, your God, uh, he is, uh, he is, uh, he is. Uh, all that and more. Uh, things may pass away. Uh, trouble may leave. Uh, but your God, uh, I want to remind you uh, 
Your God is Jehovah. Your God is Elohim. Your God is the El Shaddai. Whatever you need, he's able. He's able. He's able. He's able to take your situation and turn it around. He's able to work it out. What you can't work out, he'll work it out. What you can't fix, he'll fix. I hear him saying, I'm turning it around. Somebody in your living room, in your bedroom, jump to your feet and turn. Every time you turn, God is bringing you closer to your victory. Every time you turn, God is bringing you closer to your breakthrough. I want to remind you, we serve a God who is sovereign. We serve a God who is above. We serve a God who loves us. I just came to remind you. I just came to remind you of who your God is. That's why we praise him. That's why we bless him. Throw up your hands. Open up your mouth and bless him. Praise Jehovah. Bless him. Praise Elohim. Bless him. Praise the El Shaddai. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Take your eye off the problem. Take your eye off the negative and turn your eyes on the Lord. Turn your eyes on your God who is able, who is able, he is able. I don't know what your individual problem is, but whatever it is, we serve a God who's got all power. He is omnipotent. He is omnipotent. And when he's ready, he's going to bust the move for you. Yeah. 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 Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Praise him in your house. Praise him right now. Praise him. Yeah. yeah. This is just a reminder, because we've been overwhelmed. If you watch TV enough, you get overwhelmed. You watch CNN, MSNBC, or Fox, you get overwhelmed. They keep reminding us of what the problem is. They keep reminding us of the crisis. They keep reminding us Racism, they remind us, and, and we need to be reminded, but, 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 but I just want to let you know. I said, I just want to let you know that like, like Jehoshaphat, when, when they were being attacked, he said, Lord, we don't know what to do. So our eyes, our eyes are on you. That's another way of saying, look, behold, we serve the Lord. He is the God of all flesh. That means he's the God of black flesh and white flesh. He's the God of brown flesh and yellow flesh. He's the God of racist flesh. He's the God of hateful flesh. And whenever God is ready to do what he wants to do, he's going to step in because he is El Shaddai. Somebody say El Shaddai, El Shaddai. That means he is the God that has all power. And he is able. Now, I don't know what you need God to do for you, but right now I want you to get in your mind something that is impossible that you need God to do. I want you to get in your mind something that's going on in your life. It might be in your body, it might be in your finances, it might be in your family. I don't know where it is, but I want you to get in your mind something that is impossible. And we're gonna take a few seconds and we're gonna praise him for it. Why? Because I want to remind you who your God is. 
is. I want to remind you who your God is to you. I want to remind you that it doesn't matter what doesn't happen to other people. 10,000 shall fall on my side, but it shall not come nigh me because I serve a God who is Lord and God. Jehovah Elohim, and he is my El Shaddai. Now I want you to take the next few seconds, throw up your hands, open your mouth, and begin to praise him right now. Yes! He's able! He's able! He's able, he's able to do exceeding and abundantly above what you can ask or think he's able, he's going to bring you out. He's able, he's going to make a way. He's able, he's going to fix it. He's able, yes he is. Don't focus on what the world want you to look at. Turn your eyes on your God. Behold, I am the Lord, the God, the God of all flesh. Is that anything too hard for me? Is there anything that I am not marvelous at? Is there anything I don't do in a wonderful way. I am the awesome God. I am the mighty God. I am the great God. And I am your God. Yes, I am. Be not defeated. Be not scared. Ah. Be not dismayed. What every time your God will take care of you. Your God will make a way for you. Your God will turn it around for you. I came to remind you of who your God is. I came to remind you of what your God can do. He is omnipotent. He is Lord and he is sovereign. Sovereign, sovereign, yes, and he will, he will give you the victory. He will, he will, he will turn it around for you. It does not matter what it looks like now. Your God is El Shaddai. You better be reminded, you better remember who he is. El Shaddai, yeah! Throw up your hand and shout it! Yeah. I'm finished. This was just a reminder of who your God is. There's a lot of noise going on in our city, nation, and world. There's a lot of, you can't turn on the news and not be reminded of some of the craziness. But my job, my lane, is to remind you <laughs> God we serve is the only living and true God. And not only is he mighty, not only does he know the beginning from the end, the first and the last, he also knows where you are in the middle. Mm. Leave, that, leave it alone, devil. Leave that, leave that alone. Leave that alone. Leave that alone. Leave that alone. To somebody, to somebody who's watching, listen. You're not at the beginning of it. And you're not at the end of it. And you think that because you're in the middle of it, that he has lost track of you. But listen to me, I want to remind you who your God is. Your Jehovah knows exactly where you are 
in the middle of the covenant. He knows exactly what you're dealing with. He has heard your cry. He has seen your tears. And I want to remind you of who he is. He is the El Shaddai. He's the God for whom nothing is impossible. I know it's impossible for you right now. I know you cannot see your way out. But hold up. Look back over your life. Have there not been other impossible things that you have prayed about, that you have cried about, that you have complained about? Are there not other impossible things that your God has come through for you and shown himself mighty and shown himself strong? Well, I just came to remind you that he's the same God. Yesterday, today, and forever. God, I'm trying to stop, but there's somebody who's watching who, who this, this word has come just for you to remind you because your mind has been flooded by negativity. Your mind has been flooded by all the things that have been going wrong and have not lined up, but God told me to remind you of who he is. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? Bow your heads with me. Father, I've given them your word. I've shared with them what you gave me. Now, Lord, let this word rest in their spirit. Let it take root in their hearts and let it bring forth fruit as they go about this week. We're bombarded by all of this negativity, but I want to remind them of what you told me. You said, Douglas, remind them of who I am. Remind them that I've brought them through many dangers, toils, and snares. Remind them that I am the Lord, their God, I want you to put your hands together right where you are. You might be by yourself, but put your hands together and give God, give God some praise. Mm.